Hey everyone, Smite Pants Chess, and today I'm going to look at another Leela vs. Stockfish game. This is game number 66, and it had a very interesting end game. In this game, Leela is playing with the white pieces, Stockfish playing with black, and the opening book was quite quick in this one. It was just a King's Indian, so it went d4, knight to f6, c4, g6, knight c3, and then bishop g7, and this is the end of the book. And for Leela's first move, she plays very natural e4. Stockfish plays d6, there was bishop to e2, castles, and knight to f3. And already this has been played many times and it's just theory. Black now plays e5. And there's a little trick here, so maybe white thinks he could win a pawn with takes. And after pawn recaptures, queen takes queen, rook takes queen, and knight takes e5. It looks as though white's just won a free pawn. But black now has this nice move, knight takes e4. And after knight takes e4, bishop takes e5. The material is still equal, and black's got no issues in this game, so white's gained nothing from capturing that pawn. So, just an interesting opening tactic for you there. But the game continued on with Leela castling kingside. Black now took on d4. The knight recaptured on d4, and Stockfish played rook to e8, attacking e4. Leela defends with f3, and now knight c6 is played with Leela dropping her knight back to c2, and Stockfish now moving their knights to d7 to open up this bishop on g7, and Leela played a natural bishop to e3, just covering this d4 square. And straight away now, Stockfish played a really rare move that I've not seen played in my opening book that too often. I think it was two games. Stockfish goes in for the strategic, bishop takes c3, trading their powerful bishop for the knight on c3, doubling white's c-pawn. So black's gained the advantage of doubled c-pawns against white, but white now has the two bishops. So this will become a very interesting game. Play continued on with b6. Lila played knight to b4, attacking the c6 knight, which jumps into a5, which makes a lot of sense. They don't want to trade off that knight on b4. Bishop h6, so the idea for Lila is to play queen to d4 next followed by queen g7 mate. Simple stuff, right? Well, Stockfish now just plays knight c5 though, and black's actually got a really nice position. White structure really doesn't allow her to contest with black's pawns on this side of the board. Um, however, the king side is another matter. So queen d4 is played by Lila, threatening mate on g7. Stockfish so calmly attacks the queen, defends the g7 square at the same time, forcing white to drop their queen back. And now Stockfish, I really like this move. Play c6, just protecting the d5 square and maybe even allowing a knight or the queen to jump in to c7 at the ideal moment. So black's got a very solid structure right now. But play continues then. So Leela played rook to e1. Stockfish now plays knight c5. I really like black's structure on the queen side. It's really solid. It's going to be very hard to break down. But now Leela obviously focuses her attention on the other side of the board where she probably has a strategic advantage. She plays h4. Prepares h5, and he's basically just going to crack open black's pawn structure where the king will no longer be safe. So at the moment, white does have a really powerful bishop, dominates the dark squares, um, and black might be struggling in the end game. So Stockfish plays queen f6, attacks the c3 pawn, and Lila just defends it with rook to c1. Queen d4 here is also possible, offering the trade of queens, um, but I think black can just play queen to e5. Doesn't have to take on d4. Rook d1 may continue the game, but after bishop to e6. Queen takes d6, takes, takes, and rook a c8. Black's going to pick up the pawn on c4 at a later date, most likely. And this position is actually given as white is only ever so slightly better in this position. So I think Lila played the right move. She didn't want to trade queens, so rook c1 was played. Stockfish developed the bishop. Lila put their other rook onto the e-file. The knight went backwards and knight d3 was played. And there was a, indeed a trade here. Knight takes d3, bishop takes d3 and just queen e5. So already Stockfish, again, still has a very solid position. It looks as though the knight's ready to jump in to c5. Um, it'd be very interesting to see how Lila breaks down black's structure here. So first off anyway, Lila targets the weak d6 pawn, plays rook to d1. Um, and if black now decides he wants to catch it on c3, the idea is that Leela can just crack open black's position with h5. And if g takes h5 in this position, there's queen g3 check. 
king h8 and now e5 queen g7 mate is threatened and after rook g8 queen h4 um, it's pretty much near damning is possible to stop white gaining an advantage in this position I mean how does black stop queen to f6 rook g6 is possible but then just comes bishop takes so black's in a mess here after this h5 move in this variation uh, rook e7 is also given as the best move and after queen h4 here rook a e8 and king f2 the position is actually given as equal black's actually a pawn up here though uh, but black's king looks quite ropey here and the dark squares have been dominated by white so it's very double edged back in the game then instead of taking uh, stockfish just solidifies even more plays f6 so now has a line of pawns on the sixth rank just stopping any white pieces infiltrating bishop c2 was played opening up the d file Stockfish plays knight to d8 and Leela comes up with an incredibly clever move here, just c5. So the d-pawn is pinned. The only other move I could think of is b takes c5 here for black. And white gains a really nice advantage with f4. Attacking the queen and the pawn still. Queen takes c3. Rook e3 and then queen has to drop back to a5. And now white can gain an advantage with f5. If g takes here then queen g3 is incredibly strong. Uh, and if black just ignores this with knight to f7, then f takes g6 is incredibly strong as well. And if knight takes the bishop, queen takes f6 comes in, sacking a piece, rook f8 and just queen e7, threatening mate on h7 and also attacking the bishop at the same time. So taking this pawn straight away leads to some ropey positions for stockfish. So instead stockfish plays knight to f7 first, attacks the bishop on h6 which drops back to c1 and now stockfish does take on c5 so stockfish has just won a pawn but it was that double pawn that was quite weak for white so if anything it might have helped white's position because he just opened up um, the squares for the bishops so it's very unclear actually who the sacked pawn favors but after taking leela continues with f4 like we saw in the previous variation Again, if queen takes c3 here, rook e3 looks very nice. Queen b4 and just h5 again, cracking open black's position. And if takes, bishop d2 and queen b8, followed by queen h4. And uh, white's going to play bishop c3 here and is attacking two pawns on h5 and on f6. And uh, black's structure is now pretty much destroyed. And black has a lot of defending to do. I mean, rook g3 looks also very nice here and very tempting. So instead of going pawn grabbing, Stockfish retreats the queen back to e6. And Leela plays an incredibly weird move, c4. Explosive, as Feingold would say. Uh, this is explosive, actually. If queen takes c4, white will probably play bishop to b3, opening up that diagonal for the bishop. And if queen b4, take on f7, take on f7, and rook takes d6. All of a sudden, white has a very nice game. And it's all of a sudden black's got the doubled c pawns and white's going to probably hoover them up at some point in later on in the game. All right, so c4 was played. Uh, Stockfish ignored this as well. Stockfish isn't known to be a pawn grabber. Rook ab8 was played instead. And Leela plays h5, as we see, attacking black's position. And Stockfish does take this off. G takes h5. So Leela's playing in a very alpha zero way here, sacking loads of pawns and just opening up the lines for the bishops and the rooks. Makes a lot of sense. But this is very high-end stuff, and you will never see a human player probably trying this. Queen h4 then was played, attacking h5. So pretty much white's going to win this pawn back straight away. Um, Stockfish actually plays queen g4 then, defending h5. But this allows Leela to take another pawn back. Queen takes f6. Rook to e6 is played by Stockfish, hitting the queen, which retreats back to c3. And even though Leela's a pawn down, black's got two double pawns on the c file and two double pawns on the h file not exactly a very strong structure anymore but stockfish continues on and threatens mate anyway rook g6 threatening mate on g2 Leela defends this the queen comes to g3 and Leela plays rook to e3 again hitting the queen forcing stockfish pretty much to take this pawn off so queen takes f4 is played and now e5 is played the bishop suddenly hits this rook on g6 if the rook retreats away from this diagonal, and then rook e4 is incredibly strong because the queen can go to g3, but then comes takes, takes, and at the end of this variation comes e6, and white will pick up a piece. 
So the strongest move that Stockfish could find here was actually just knight takes e5, uh, giving up the exchange. So then comes bishop takes g6, h takes g6, and Lila finds a winning idea here to get a good advantage in the endgame. She plays rook takes the knight, rook takes e5. Again, if pawn takes, the rook will take on d7. So queen takes is played, Lila recaptures, the pawn takes, allows white take the bishop on d7, and after rook to b1, rook to d1 to defend the bishop, and rook to b4. Uh, we're in the end game now. I've always wanted to say that line. So Stockfish is attacking the c4 pawn, um, and that's undefendable. So basically, after black takes on c4, black's got four pawns for the bishop. Um, so this is a rather interesting end game, I think. However, you might argue that white's actually got a better position because the pawns, if this maybe c5 pawn was placed here on b6, I might suggest that black would actually be winning this game. But the pawns as they are, seems as though white may be able to pick them off quite easily. So let's see what happens. Lila continued the game, bishop g5, stockfish took on c4, and Lila played rook d6, attacking two pawns at the same time. Stockfish attacks the bishop, which retreats to f6, but now he's attacking e5. And as I say, it's very hard for black to defend all his pawns at once. Rook e4 then to defend e5, and Lila plays a3. I think as a human player here, if I was playing with the black pieces, I might be tempted to play rook to e3. Uh, and after a4, just play rook to a3 and try and win this a pawn. And after takes on e5, maybe g5 to stop the rook taking it. Rook takes c6, rook takes a4, takes and king f7. I'd be quite happy maybe to try and play this end game as black. I'm not sure who's winning here. I'm probably white to be honest, but at least as black I could fight for a draw here. But in the game, c4 was played instead. Rook takes c6 was played, king to f7, and bishop to g5. Stockfish throws in a check, the king hides, and actually Stockfish does get behind this a pawn, and there is a trade, rook takes c4, rook takes a3. Lila checks on c7. The king moves up, and another check is thrown in, and rook to f7. Some nice coordination by Lila. The king hides on g7 and now rook e6, attacking the e pawn, which is defended by the rook. However, now Lila plays rook to e7, forcing the king backwards onto the 8th rank, and plays rook c7. So holds the position there for now. So Stockfish played rook a4. Lila checks on h6. King e8 is played, and now Lila tries to win the remaining pawns with rook g7. Hitting the g-pawn, uh, rook h4 is played with check, the king hides, and basically black's probably lost the pawn here. And Stockfish plays a5, they can't defend a7 and g6 at the same time. Lila takes, so basically wins another pawn, and now has a bishop, rook and pawn for a rook and three pawns. Stockfish attacks the rook, which goes to a6, again attacking a5. a4 defends this. Uh, bishop g5 though, attacking the rook, which comes to g4. And Lila retreats it back to d8. And Stockfish plays rook c4. So keep an eye here on how Lila wins the game. She plays bishop f6, attacking e5. Rook c5 is clever, it very defends the pawn. And if rook takes a4 here, then king takes f6. So instead of doing this, Lila continues with bishop h8. Still attacking the e5 pawn. The king attacks the bishop. And now just rook to a8. Again, some very nice coordination. King h7 to maintain the threat on the bishop. But now the king just moves up for Leela. Rook d5, uh, king g3, and now a3. So eventually Leela has to move this bishop away from the king, so bishop f6 is played. Stockfish throws in a check. But now the king comes up to h4 and gets into a good position, attacking h5. Stockfish defends and attacks the bishop at the same time. But now bishop to e7, threatening to take on a3. Uh, and how is Stockfish to defend this? So they play rook d2, which is a very clever move, which attacks um, the g2 pawn. But it's not clever enough, because now Lila can just take on a3. Point being, if rook takes g2 here, then Lila can play rook g8 check and just pick up the rook with rook takes g2. So bishop takes a3, Lila's won another pawn. 
now has the bishop, rook and pawn for a rook and two pawns. And it's looking very ropey for Stockfish now. King f7 was played then. King h3 to defend the pawn. Rook d1. King h2. King g6. And now bishop c5. Getting more coordinated. Rook d2 and then rook to e8. So Leela goes attacking this e-pawn. Stockfish defends. Leela attacks again. Stockfish defends again. And now attacks the other pawn by Leela. So Stockfish counters by attacking the bishop, which drops back to b8. Again maintaining the threat on e5. Rook b2 attacks the bishop again. Leela moves it to a7. And has finally to play king g6 to defend this h-pawn. Leela offers a trade of rooks, rook b8. Stockfish says no thank you, I'll attack your bishop instead. Bishop c5 then. King f5 and Leela attacks the h-pawn again. Stockfish defends, a check is thrown in, the king goes backwards, and now bishop to d6, again with the threat of maybe bishop takes e5 coming. Stockfish attacks again on d2. So all of a sudden this looks very drawish, so how does Leela win the endgame? Well, she plays bishop to e7, the rook attacks the bishop again, and the bishop now hides on h4, and this seems the correct plan to win the game. So play continued with e4. Bishop g5 check, king f5, the bishop hides on e3. If Stockfish now continues attacking this bishop with rook to d3, Leela finally has a very nice move, rook g5 check, king f6, bishop f4, and how does Stockfish defend this h-pawn? If h4, then Leela can play rook e5, attacking the pawn. If uh, black defends this, then rook h5 attacks the pawn on h4, threatens bishop e5, check, and after rook d3, just play rook takes h4, and then black will have one pawn left. So similar in the game, uh, h4 was actually played first, bishop f2 attacks the pawn, and stockfish basically gives up the pawn, it's a hopeless cause. Lula wins the pawn on h4, rook d7 is played, and now just rook d8, again offering the trade, stockfish says no, Bishop f2, king e6, uh, a check, black protects the pawn, and Leela plays his bishop e3 idea again. Uh, and after two more moves, king c4, and rook takes e4, Stockfish resigned the game. Again, in this position, I'm not really sure what black can do. For instance, if rook g7, then I went through it with an engine. Basically, white just pushes this g-pawn, and that's all she wrote, and there's not really any way for black to make any progress. So this was the final position, and basically White's just going to push the G-pawn up the board and easily win this endgame. Anyway, I actually really like this game. It was very simple, and Leela just uh, got into this really nice endgame with a extra piece, and managed to hoover up Black's really weak pawns. I thought it was very nicely done. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my analysis. If you can, please do support the channel with a like, comment, or subscribe. I do appreciate it a lot, and I appreciate everyone who leaves a comment. I do try to reply to all of them as well. Anyway, I hope you are staying safe, everyone, and I'll see you soon.